Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Today in the studio, right here, I have the brand new Oryx Pro, the Oryx Pro Advanced. And this new model has some impressive specs. And it not only features 12th gen Intel CPUs, but it also has a very powerful NVIDIA GPU, DDR5 memory, as well as a 4K OLED screen. And in this video, I'm going to give it a full review. System76 sent the new model into the studio, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Now, before we get started with this review, there's a few things that I need to get out of the way first. And first of all, there's a very clear policy when it comes to reviews on Learn Linux TV. In fact, the rules are right there on the website. The basic summary is that even though System76 sent this machine into the studio for me to review, I don't allow any company to have any creative control whatsoever when it comes to the review content that I put out for you guys. In fact, I don't allow any company to screen review videos before you guys get a chance to see them. But to be fair, that's not something that System76 has ever asked for. I just need to make you guys aware of that because the rules when it comes to reviews are the same across the board. Anyway, let's dive into the review of the Oryx Pro Advanced. I actually really enjoyed my time with this machine. Unfortunately, I did run into a few problems, but I'm going to give you my full unbiased opinion on this new model, and let's just get right to it. First of all, let's go over a quick summary of the new model, the Oryx Pro Advanced. Specifically, what's the target audience for this computer? And also, what's new in this latest model? Its target audience is for those of you that need more processing power than you typically find in most notebooks. This means that you'll end up with a CPU and GPU that's fairly powerful. In fact, the Oryx Pro is currently the most powerful notebook within the current System76 lineup. And with all that power, the Oryx Pro is potentially a great fit for people that play PC games, designers, or anyone else that needs a more powerful CPU and GPU to get their work done. There are several graphics modes available, including hybrid graphics, which I'll cover later in this review. But with all that power comes a few trade-offs. And the first of those is battery life. The battery life in this model will not be as good as it might be in an ultra portable. So that means that the Oryx Pro is a good fit for someone that uses their computer at their desk most of the time. To be fair, you can switch the laptop into a lower power mode that's going to last a lot longer when it comes to battery than it would normally, but it's still going to be underneath the battery life when it comes to an ultra portable computer. Another trade-off is price, since the extra processing power comes with a cost. Also, the Oryx Pro is going to have a louder fan that's required in order to keep all of the internals cool. I'll discuss those things in more detail later in this video. Anyway, the latest model in the Oryx Pro lineup is the Oryx Pro Advanced, which is the one that I'm reviewing in this video. The biggest highlight when it comes to this model right here is that it features a 4K OLED screen. But that's not all. The Oryx Pro Advanced also features DDR5 memory, which is pretty awesome. You can order this model with either a 15 inch or 17 inch display. And there's also some other things that you can customize as well when you go to order yours. Let's take a quick detour and look at the out of box experience. If you were to purchase the Oryx Pro Advanced, what would that experience be like? Well, let's take a look at that. First of all, System76 definitely uses some unique packaging to say the least. Their packaging hasn't actually changed all that much over the years, but if you haven't actually seen their packaging, it definitely stands out. The box itself is very large, much larger than it needs to be when it comes to shipping a notebook. But that's probably a good thing, as it means that the box can absorb more impact during shipping. And there's all kinds of cool detail all over the box, and it definitely stands out. Anyway, inside the box you'll find some extra things like whatever this is, a cleaning cloth, and so on. Then there's the power brick, which is what you see here, and it's fairly standard. System76 also includes a few inserts as well, such as a thank you card, stickers, and even a cardboard robot thing. Then, of course, we have the computer itself, packaged with a protective sleeve over the display, and a protector between the display and the keyboard. So all in all, I'd say the packaging is pretty good. The computer arrived safely, and that's all we could really ask for. In fact, every computer that System76 has ever sent me for review has come in without any damage at all. So what about the overall build quality of the Oryx Pro Advanced? Well, the first thing that you'll likely notice is that the Oryx Pro is a bit on the heavy side. 
The 15-inch version, which is the one that was sent into the studio for review, weighs in at just over 5 pounds. But then again, keep in mind that this is a performance PC, not an ultra portable. So in my opinion, the weight is more or less what you'd expect from a computer in this class. The chassis itself feels very solid with tight hinges that feel very firm, but not so firm to the point where you'd need two hands to open the lid. Also, there's a decent number of ports as well. On the left hand side, we have two USB ports as well as an audio and microphone port. On the right hand side, we have a USB-C port, an SD card reader, and even, get this, a physical ethernet jack. And that's awesome. On the back, there's an HDMI port, a mini display port, and also a Thunderbolt 4 port. So for me, it basically has all the ports that I could ever want on a notebook. So let's switch gears and talk about that display. The 4K display on this model is definitely going to be one of the most exciting things about it. And rightfully so. The Oryx Pro Advanced features a 4K OLED display, which is absolutely stunning. It's so great that I don't even think the B-roll in this review will even do it justice. What I really wanted to do was show you the Tokyo battle scene from the movie Godzilla vs. Kong, which is absolutely the best demo scene I've found yet when it comes to testing OLED displays. But you know, there's copyright trolls all over YouTube, so I can't even show you a few minutes of that movie just to bring out the quality of the display. So hopefully the B-roll will give you some idea of the quality, but take it from me, the screen is stunning. And actually it's probably the best looking display that I've ever seen on a laptop. To be fair, this is the very first OLED notebook that I've ever tested, so it's absolutely possible that there's better displays out there. But the display that we have here is stunning, and it's also very bright. Moving around the chassis, let's take a look at the keyboard. The keyboard on this model is virtually the same keyboard that this lineup has had for quite a while now. And actually, I think it's one of my favorite keyboards that are featured in notebooks today. My only complaint about this keyboard is that there's a numpad, so the keyboard is a bit off-center as a result. I really wish we had keyboards available without numpads, but that's just a matter of opinion. The keyboard is still great to type on, and I really enjoy using it. But again, if we were able to be without the numpad and the off-center keyboard, then I would like it even more. In addition, the keyboard is also backlit with multiple color options. The backlight was turned off out of the box, but there's keys on the right side of the keyboard that'll allow you to enable or disable the backlight as well as change its color. Personally, I don't feel like I need a backlight at all. It's not something that I've ever found a use for. But with computers like this, I sometimes find myself turning it on anyway because the various colors that are available are really cool. Continuing, the trackpad is fairly standard. It's not the best that I've ever used, but it's far from the worst. I'd say that it's more than acceptable, and I have no complaints about the trackpad itself. But what I do find issue with is the fingerprint reader. You can see it at the top left corner of the trackpad. Using the fingerprint reader, you can actually log into the machine by swiping your finger over the reader. Or at least in theory. In my experience, the fingerprint reader doesn't actually work. When I went to enable the fingerprint reader, there was no option for it in settings at all. And I thought that was really strange. And that made me curious if System76 even mentions the fingerprint reader at all on the product page for this model, but they don't. It's not listed at all as a feature, but it clearly exists. So I decided to try and get it working. What I did was I installed a couple of packages that were missing from Pop! OS. And these packages are responsible for enabling fingerprint reader support. On the screen right now is the command that I use to enable fingerprint reader support. I just had to install these two packages right here. Anyway, after I installed those packages, I rebooted the machine for safe measure. And after that, the missing fingerprint option was actually present and fully available. So I scanned my finger and it looked very promising. It looked like it was going to work. But unfortunately, I was unable to unlock the computer with my fingerprint. I even tried deleting and rescanning my fingerprint, but it still didn't work. So that was unfortunate. So I have two issues with this. First of all, if a computer has a fingerprint reader, then I would expect a company like System76 to get it working. I mean, the company is known for making computers that are born to run Linux. So having a fingerprint reader on this computer that doesn't actually work is a bit alarming. But also, I really don't understand why the packages that are required for fingerprint support aren't present by default. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that merely having these packages installed is not a problem. GNOME itself should only allow the option to show up if you actually have a supported fingerprint reader. But unfortunately, after I installed those packages, well, it still didn't work. The way that I see it, if the fingerprint reader is not supported, then it has no business being present. 
Moving on from the trackpad, let's talk about the switchable graphics on this model as well as battery life and fan noise. The Oryx Pro Advanced features four graphics modes, integrated graphics, NVIDIA graphics, hybrid graphics, and compute graphics. On my end, I tested everything other than compute graphics, which I didn't have a use case for. Anyway, here's how the switchable graphics works on this model. With hybrid graphics, the computer will use the integrated GPU most of the time, and as needed, you can launch individual applications against the NVIDIA card whenever you need the extra power. So you could think of this mode as a middle ground between lower power and full power. NVIDIA mode, on the other hand, ensures that the NVIDIA GPU is always active, and that should give you full power. But then again, I haven't noticed any discernible difference in performance when it comes to apps that use the NVIDIA GPU while running in NVIDIA or hybrid modes. Anyway, continuing, we also have integrated graphics mode. And in that mode, the NVIDIA GPU is fully disabled, which will end up giving you the best battery life that you could possibly get from this hardware. In that mode, I was able to stretch the battery life to around 5 hours, but your mileage may vary. The other modes will give you less battery life, since outside of integrated mode, the NVIDIA GPU is always at least somewhat active and uses extra energy. But another trade-off when it comes to integrated graphics modes is that external displays can't be used in that mode, which is a bit of a bummer. The most likely reason why this is the case is because the display ports are probably wired directly into the NVIDIA GPU, which is incredibly common when it comes to notebooks. So in that mode, the Intel GPU isn't able to access those ports. You can also switch modes at any time, and every time you do so, a reboot is necessary. And I think that the ability to choose between these different modes is definitely an awesome feature. Next, let's talk about fan noise. The fan on the Oryx Pro Advanced isn't the loudest fan of any computer that I've used, but it's also not the quietest either. To be fair, a louder fan is to be expected on a performance model like this one. And in addition to that, it's also very reasonable to expect the fan to be very loud if you're playing a game or maybe rendering a video. Anyone that wants a silent laptop should probably go for an ultra-portable model instead. But with all of that said, the fan on this model does actually end up being annoying sometimes. Even with no apps open at all, the fan will spin up and down over and over. In fact, while I was writing notes for this particular review, I found it very distracting. Like I mentioned, fan noise is to be expected when it comes to a performance model like this one, but with the fan spinning up and down repeatedly, it was very hard for me to tune it out. It seems like there may be an issue with the fan curve, and if so, that might be something that's fixable in a firmware update. Now, I don't have a problem with fan noise in general, so long as it's within reason, but spinning up and down over and over is definitely distracting. But who knows, maybe an update will give us a more acceptable fan curve. Anyway, let's move on to talk about the operating system. As I'm sure more than a few of you are aware, System76 computers ship with Pop! OS, or you can actually go for Ubuntu as an alternative. The review unit that I received came with Pop! OS. Considering that Pop! is my favorite distribution, you won't hear any complaints from me about it being the default. It's great, and in my opinion, it's the best desktop distribution you can get because it's the most compatible when it comes to Linux, and the experience is very professional. Even though Pop! OS isn't specific to System76 hardware, it really does feel at home here. Now I won't go into too much detail about Pop! OS in this video, I have several videos regarding this distro on my channel already, and I also review every release that comes out. But Pop! OS does have a new and interesting bug that I've noticed, where the battery just stops charging for some reason. This happens regardless of what the current battery level is, and it also happens even with no apps running at all. Now this bug isn't specific to the new Oryx Pro though, as System76 machines that I have from previous generations have the same issue now, so the only thing that I can think of is that there's a bug in the Linux kernel. But I did make System76 aware of this, so they're looking into it. But anyway, Pop! OS is great, I really love it. That's not a surprise for anyone that's been following this channel. I've basically said that a lot, and with good reason. Pop! OS is awesome. So it's definitely a great fit on the new Oryx Pro Advanced. When it comes to performance, the Oryx Pro Advanced is very fast. And I guess that's to be expected considering that this model has a 12th gen Intel Core i7 CPU as well as an NVIDIA GPU. And the fact that it has DDR5 memory makes it even better. In every test, the performance has been great. But there was actually one test that didn't go so well. I decided to test video rendering on this model because I figured with its powerful resources, along with its OLED display, the new Oryx Pro should make for a fantastic editing machine. But what's odd to me is that rendering a 17 minute video took almost 40 minutes. And that's about the same amount of rendering time as I've had on older and less powerful models. 
And to go really crazy, I decided to compare the rendering against an M1 Mac. I had an extra one lying around, and I decided to put it to work. And the M1 Mac actually got the same rendering project done in just over 12 minutes. I used the same project file, the same resources, the same everything. The same program, just a different computer. And considering that the CPU and GPU in the Oryx Pro is actually rated better than the one in the M1 Mac, I just can't see any reason for that to be the case. Now, considering that I'm rendering 4K content, that is a big workload. And you might even be able to argue that 37 minutes to render a video isn't the most egregious amount of time, but for a computer this powerful, I absolutely expected faster render times. So to me, that was very disappointing. So when it comes to the new Oryx Pro Advanced, there's some pros and cons. When it comes to pros, it's a very fast machine, the build quality is great, I love the keyboard, and the screen is absolutely stunning. In addition to that, the audio quality is pretty good too. It's not the best audio that I've ever heard in my life, but it's definitely one of the better ones. So it gets a win when it comes to audio quality as well. And also, after using an OLED display on a notebook, I don't really know if it's going to be easy for me to use anything else at this point. I mean, it literally looks that good. Now the downside is going to be the fan noise, and also the fact that, well, rendering doesn't seem as fast as I think it should be. That's really weird and something that I hope to test further as time goes on. But when it comes to fan noise, that's most likely something that can be fixed in firmware anyway, so that might not actually be a big deal. In fact, I've actually seen System76 fix something in firmware because one person actually brought up a problem on Twitter. So they're paying attention, and I would expect a firmware update very soon, but as of the time I'm recording this video, the fan was a little distracting. But other than rendering, the fan noise, and the fact that the fingerprint reader doesn't seem to work, it's a really great machine. Now, I hope those issues actually get fixed, and again, maybe a firmware update will fix everything. I guess it remains to be seen. But for right now, just keep those things in mind if you are considering one of these for yourself. I just wanted to make you guys aware of those things, and now I have. As far as whether or not I would recommend this machine to you guys, the short answer is yes, but just keep in mind that I brought up some concerns that I have with the machine, and your decision will ultimately depend on whether or not those concerns impact you. Anyway, thank you so much to System76 for sending the Oryx Pro Advance to the studio for me to review. I really appreciate it. In the meantime, I have some awesome videos coming very soon, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again very soon.